In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello and welcome to our service this Sunday as we journey together throughout the season of Lent in preparation to meet the risen Lord when he comes to us at Easter. Before we begin our service, let's briefly have a look at what this video contains. Each week, we will begin with an opening hymn. This will be followed by the examine and the collect, which is the opening prayer said at Mass. We will then begin the Liturgy of the Word. This consists of a first reading, psalm, second reading, gospel acclamation and gospel reading. After the gospel reading, there will be another hymn or musical reflection, followed by a homily. Immediately after the homily, there will be an opportunity for personal reflection while listening to a short musical interlude. Then we will recite the Apostles' Creed and pray the intercessions. Since this service is not a Mass, we will then pray the prayer of St Alphonsus and offer a spiritual communion. Over the six Sundays of Lent, we will have a reflection on the Stations of the Cross. Each week, we will reflect on two or three of the Stations. During these reflections, there will be scriptural references for each Station. I would encourage you to read these reflections yourself while there is quiet music playing in the background. There will also be some of the prayers recited that you would usually expect to hear when attending Stations of the Cross at church. Our liturgy will conclude with a blessing and a final hymn. Let's now begin our liturgy with our opening hymn. Before we listen to God's word through the Holy Scriptures, let's first begin by acknowledging our sins and pray for God's forgiveness as we say. 
I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God spoke to Noah and his sons. See, I establish my covenant with you, and with your descendants after you. Also, with every living creature to be found with you. Birds, cattle, and every wild beast with you. Everything that came out of the ark. Everything that lives on the earth. I establish my covenant with you. No thing of flesh shall be swept away again by the waters of the flood. There shall be no flood to destroy the earth again. God said, Here is the sign of the covenant I make between myself and you, and every living creature with you for all generations. I set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I gather the clouds over the earth, and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant between myself and you, and every living creature of every kind. And so the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all things of flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. Remember your mercy, Lord, and the love you have shown from of old. In your love remember me, because of your goodness, O Lord. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. The Lord is good and upright. He shows the path to those who stray. He guides the humble in the right path. He teaches his way to the poor. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Christ himself, innocent though he was, died once for sins, died for the guilty, to lead us to God. In the body he was put to death, in the spirit he was raised to life, and in the spirit he went to preach to the spirits in prison. Now it was long ago, when Noah was still building that ark, which saved only a small group of eight people by water. And when God was still waiting patiently, that these spirits refused to believe. That water 
is a type of the baptism which saves you now, and which is not the washing off of physical dirt, but a pledge made to God from a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has entered heaven and is at God's right hand, now that he has made the angels of the dominations and powers his subjects. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness, and he remained there for forty days, and was tempted by Satan. He was with the wild beasts, and the angels looked after him. After John had been arrested, Jesus went into Galilee. There he proclaimed the good news from God. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Earlier this week, we began the season of Lent with the distribution of ashes during Mass on Ash Wednesday for those who were able to attend. As the priest places the ash on our forehead in the sign of the cross, he may say the words, Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Alternative words may be used, Repent and believe in the Gospel. If we are to repent, then we need to turn away from sin. In our world today, there are so many things that can lead us into temptation and cause us to sin. Avoiding temptation is something that we are faced with each and every day of our lives. In today's Gospel, we hear Mark's short account of the tempting of Jesus by Satan. Some of us might find it difficult to believe that Jesus could be tempted. But in becoming like us, Jesus experienced temptation as we do. The letter to the Hebrews says that Jesus was tempted in every way that we are, though he is without sin. Sin is a fall from humanity. But the fact that Jesus was without sin does not mean that he was any less a human being. Jesus was able to reject sin, but his temptations were very real. Our Gospel reading today tells us that Jesus was tempted by Satan in the wilderness, where he remained for forty days, and that angels ministered to him. If it was a struggle for Jesus to remain faithful to God's call, then it is certainly going to be a struggle for us. Life's journey takes us along many different paths, and sometimes these paths do not take us in the direction that God wants for us. Because Jesus experienced temptation, he can empathise with us in our struggles against temptation. And because he himself was able to overcome temptation, he can help us to overcome our temptations too. Therefore, we can approach him with confidence in our times of need. In today's Gospel, Jesus' victory over Satan was no once and for all victory. He had overcome temptation this time, but there would be many other times in his life that he would have to struggle against the temptations of the world. And the same is going to be true for us. All of us are weak and prone to sin. The great problem of our time is our failure to know ourselves and to recognise our own sinfulness and deal with it within ourselves. We have to struggle against the sinfulness that is in others and in our society. But our hardest struggle is against the sinfulness that originates inside of us. We are born with conflicting impulses so that doing good is always possible but never easy. The hardest victory of all is over oneself. In today's Gospel, when Jesus leaves the desert, he begins his ministry of preaching. He preaches repentance and belief in the good news from God. Lent is indeed a time when we reflect on the good news from God. It is a time to believe more deeply in the God who loves us and comes to save us in every situation. Lent is a time to listen attentively to the Word of God and to reflect on what this Word means in our lives. In today's first reading from the book of Genesis, we hear about how God establishes a covenant with Noah and his descendants. Many times in the history of God's chosen people, he made covenants with them. These covenants marked important events in the lives of his chosen people. But many times, God's chosen people broke these covenants. God always remains faithful to his covenants, but unfortunately, we often do not keep 
our side of the agreement. We are called to look back at these covenants and to let God change our faithlessness to faithfulness. Our second reading from the first letter of Peter continues this theme of covenants. We hear again of the covenant that God made with Noah. Peter explains even more clearly that we must return to faithfulness. The letter points out that it is Christ who died for our sins and that we cannot think that the death of Christ was simply a removal of dirt from his body. Rather, through the death of Christ, our consciences are made clean by our faith in him. Therefore, we are invited to choose Jesus Christ once again during this season of Lent and know that he is our salvation. Jesus came to establish a new covenant with us. The difference is, this covenant is not a two-way agreement like the covenants we hear about in the Old Testament. God has promised us salvation without us having to promise something to him in return. In other words, we have already been saved. However, we should not be complacent. Lent is a time for us to strive to become more like Jesus. In order to do this, we need to call to mind our temptations, our failures in those struggles, and our need for God's forgiveness and help. Getting to know Jesus more closely is one way in which we can achieve this. We can do this through prayer and careful reflection upon the word of God, which we hear through sacred scripture. Through our baptism and each time we receive him in the Eucharist, his spirit has been given to us. This means we are never alone when we are in the face of temptation. By experiencing God's loving forgiveness and through his grace, he helps us not to give in to the temptations of sin. We pray today that through this holy season of Lent, that God will help us to master our sinfulness and conquer our pride, to repent and believe in the gospel. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now bring our needs before God, who strengthens us when we are tempted, and lifts us up when we fall. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Christians, that the observance of Lent may lead them to a more authentic living of the Christian life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For political and civil leaders, that they may work for the common good with noble and generous hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those for whom fasting is a permanent condition due to poverty and hunger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are blind to their sins, and who see no need to change their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all of us watching now, that we may show our repentance by a new way of living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that the Lord may free them from the shadows of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our own special needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask Mary the Blessed Virgin to intercede for us as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God of mercy, look with compassion on us who are weak and prone to evil. Grant that, enlightened by your word, we may have the strength to overcome all evil. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Spiritual communion is the heartfelt desire to receive our Lord, even when we are unable because of the distance or for some other reason. This desire to receive him through spiritual communion is an act of love which prolongs our thanksgiving even when we are not in the Eucharistic presence of the Lord. The wish to live constantly in his presence can be fueled by acts of love and desire to be united with him and is a means of drawing more deeply from the life of the Holy Spirit dwelling within our souls in the state of grace. The effects of a sacrament can be received by desire, although in such a case the sacrament is not received physically, nevertheless the actual reception of the sacrament itself brings with it fuller effect than receiving it through desire alone. The writings of the saints reveal many formula for making a spiritual communion. And we're going to pray the prayer of Saint Alphonsus Liguri. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things 
and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Way of the Cross is a devotion to the Sacred Passion in which we accompany in spirit our Blessed Lord in his sorrowful journey from the house of Pilate to Calvary, and recall with sorrow and love all that took place from the time when he was condemned to death to the time when he was being laid in the tomb. Over these weeks of Lent, we will meditate devoutly on the passion and death of our Lord as we reflect on all of the Stations of the Cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. you Jesus my love above all things I repent with my whole heart of having offended you never permit me to separate myself from you again grant that I may love you always and then do with me what you will We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world.
I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart of having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Let us pray. Loving God, during the sacred season of Lent, bring us closer to you. Prepare a place in our homes and hearts for silence and solitude, so that we may rediscover the grace of a prayerful life. Enlarge our hearts so that we give to those in need, and in doing so, rediscover the grace of gratitude and generosity. Help us to fast from those things that threaten the well-being of body and soul. Remind us of the grace and simplicity. May this season of Lent be a grace-filled time to rekindle our love for and faith in you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope that you have enjoyed our liturgy today, and thank you for watching. At the end of this video, I recommend that you pray the Lord's Prayer, and end with a glory be. Until next time, may God bless you.